welcome back to Carmsden Farm for episode five with me, Mr. Sealy P. Time has passed since I last saw you. We're still on the same day, part of the month, um, and as you've seen, the stump has now been ground. Our backwards and forwards has left a bit of a track through. This field has now been cut. This is going to be tedded, then wind roads. Haven't decided on bailing yet. I think we're going to do it loose. I think. But I have also been busy because we've put in cut the fence posts and a gate. So we've now got a gate here that goes through. It's all been very nicely blended in. Very happy with that. I've been collecting up the logs a bit at a time using the gate. I could have got a trailer and taken that. And I've just been whizzing up to the sawmill. I think each load I've been getting about 800, something like that. Uh, we completed one of the fertilizing contracts. You may have already seen. I have taken the whole mowing rig, mowing setup into the sheep pasture. Uh, I've cut that and wind road at the same time using the mowers. That's going to be collected grass to go into the silage clamp of the cows. I'm then going to move the mowers over to the other field. I can't remember the field number actually. Field 4. So I've done field 31. We've done this field here, as you can sort of now see on there. Um, what we're going to do is go through the pig pen gate there then there's another gate there i think it's the only way into field four we're going to cut that and leave that on the ground not wind road uh, not yeah not wind road that will also be tedded so this one and this one are going to be hay this one and this one field 15 behind the cows because we haven't got the cows yet i'm going to mow this and wind row as well so this one and this one are both going to be used to put into the silage clamp just here our fields are all now done in so much as I've got soybean in three and six, I've got sorghum in two, and I've got canola in 23. Each of those has been rolled as well. So as you can see where it says needs rolling normally, that's not showing. That one, the only difference is that never got mulched because that had already, once I realised we owned that, <laughs> um, that had already been cultivated. So couldn't do a lot with it that's where we're at, at the moment um I, again it's that kind of got so many things i want to get done i did mention chickens we will get onto chickens but what we are going to do is take this up and oh yes i was contacted by um foley farm silos now foley farm silos farm foley a long-term friend of the channel and of me actually um, contacted me and they um, well they do new silos but they do reclaim silos so they'll take silos down when farmers are having new ones built and that kind of thing they'll either patch them up repair them add to them and then you can buy a new silo or you can buy a reclaimed silo so we're going to be buying a reclaimed silo off of um, Foley Farm silos and we're going to put it I think over by the cow farm probably call it that and that way the, the straw bales will be there. That's why I said about picking up the, the hay loose. We'll put the hay in there and then the silage will be in the silage clamp. So all of the pro things we need for making the TMR will be right there where the cows are. I've just got to work out a plot like where we can actually place it. Um, so we should be getting that put in. I've got the second fertilising contract that I took on on field 13. That's ongoing at the moment. That's going to need some more, definitely going to need another load of fertiliser. So again, the money's gone down, the money's gone up. Um, I am making more money doing fertising jobs than I'm spending. And the same with the sowing contracts, I'm making more on the contracts than I'm spending on seed, which is brilliant. But it seems we've just had a few expenses to pay out. So where I was, I was, I was hoping to go above, um, you know, up, up, up above 300,000, we haven't quite got there. Um, my rock crusher, I'm 
looking at about 10 grand an hour now, something along those lines. So, and I've left all the things in the car. These all can start jostling for position. So, let's set that there. 740. It's not mega money, but we're getting rid of the stuff. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm not going to take another load of logs. We'll drop this off. My sprayer of fertiliser will just carry on going on a worker on film 13 until it runs out and then we'll have to probably go and get it or it'll get caught on something, a tree or something like that. So I'm going to pull up here. So what we're looking at now then is hopefully, uh, I'll close that for the time being. I'm going to get the grass cut here, the grass cut over there. We're going to get a loading wagon. It's not going to be cheap, but in the long run, it'll work out better for us, for our silage and that kind of stuff. Uh, I do need to change the setting on this though, because it's on swath dropping and I want it on open. I'm sure this is the only way into this one. Uh, I'm say. And then this one here. And once these are all cut and the grass is gone, what I think I can do is then fertilise them again so I'll get a better yield next time. Now, admittedly, would I be cutting the, the, the field of grass where you've got your sheep? In reality, yes, there may be supplements and stuff you would add in for them, especially in bad weather, weather and winter and stuff like that. The whole point is the sheep would go around and eat the grass that's in the field and then they, you know, they fertilise the field for you kind of thing. Um, but obviously, I'm providing them with hay to eat so I can cut that. I know normally you wouldn't, but that's, that's where we're at. Can I fit through this gap? Oh. <laughs> Turned it off. Um, I have had a couple of comments, people asking about Obelleron, will I be going back on Sarah? I did mention it a couple of episodes back. Um, I'm hoping to, I want to, I'm just at, on, in all honesty, I know a lot of people are saying there are a lot of problems and game crashes and stuff here on Calmston. I'm loving it. I'm loving this map. Farm dog is too. You might be able to tell. Now we are going to run out of lights, <laughs> obviously, fairly quickly, so we may have to collect the rest of this. The problem is, if I leave collecting it until the next part, we're going to be into October 1, and the grass will have started to regrow again. But there's not a lot to do about that. Right, we'll change work mode to wide spreading. Uh, we'll close the gate behind us. Now I'm not getting right into the corners. So we need to lease a tedder to do two of them. Then we need to lease a wind rower. Then we're going to need to get the loading wagon. All of that will be done. And then we'll get the grass into the silage clamp. We'll get the hay into the new silo, which is going to be, I think it's only about 11 grand. I think we're paying for it. Which is brilliant, if you ask me. So leasing all this gear is not going to be cheap to get going, but... We'll do our best. So let's turn it on. Oh, and away we go. The, the pig pen, pig field is patchy. We might be able to get some grass off that. I know the horse one doesn't seem to have grown at all, really. This doesn't like tight turns, it does leave a bit of grass behind. Ah! No! Didn't see that fence. I just saw the hedge. I was hedging my bets. Sorry! No, no dad jokes, stop. <laughs> stop right there. Yeah, so as I say, I'm, I'm really enjoying Carmson. I, I'm, yeah. um, apparently, again, this is, I don't know if this is rumorous, but you know, I, I get messages from different people, um, unlike uh, like Clutch and DJ and Virtual Farmer and some of the guys that do the news channels, and they will spend hours scouring through all the different modders' um, channels and streams. I know a lot of the guys, um, 82 Studio does it, who else? does it there's a few different people that will stream their modding as well so a lot of guys will be okay. 
Uh, yeah, they, they stream their modding, so people kind of watch the streams and get an idea of what's coming up. And um, you know, I generally just kind of play the game and do my thing, you know. Uh, I don't do news, so most of my news and information is gathered from people like that, or people will message me and say, oh, did you know? And sometimes I'm like, oh, no, I didn't know that. Thank you for letting me know. And I've lost my thread of what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, this, Carmston. Apparently there's an update on the way. Um, if the update requires a new save, I think I may have a bit of a meltdown. <laughs> it's not the first time it's happened. It won't be the last. But what I do know is, if it does, to reset everything... Yeah, I don't... doesn't even bear thinking about I don't I don't even want to consider it don't want to consider it the bits I've missed I will collect don't worry and then we'll get this over and we'll do the cow field just too far over isn't it? there's obviously a collision or something close over there So I'll see you in a minute, once this is all done, we'll get the other one done with the swath and then it's out with the tedder first on both of the fields that need tedding and then it will be um, wind rowing up those and then it's going to be loading wagon time. I have completed field four. Uh, the pig field, I have done it, I've done part of it like this regular uh, drop <laughs> widespreading uh, and I've done the rest of it swath dropping so we've got a combination of everything but it's it's top up time it's top up time because my fertilizer sprayer that was doing field 13 has run out so I need to get that filling and uh, look at the fuel yeah I keep forgetting to do it I need to get some fuel in the, our fuel tank over the other side uh, I can, actually I haven't checked to see how much we've got left in it this one as well, how much have we got left in this? 6,000, so we've got enough for a fill up. We'll get that filling, that takes 4,300. And we'll get the back over to field 13. This will top up. ruptured the fuel tank. That can't be too bad, can it? Uh, oh, 12,347 litres. That's all right. Let's top up, shall we? I think I'll top up the uh, Massey as well, because that's not as low, but it is getting low. We've got plenty in the tanks. We might as well top off the tanks of fuel. And then we'll get over to the cow pasture. Uh, the silo is has been installed. It's being installed. I think it might be done. It's in... Massive thank you to uh, Foley Farm Silos for that. We are done. I'm going to go back out of the way. Might be a bit of a squeeze getting through between the posts there. Uh, actually, we can cut through that way. Can't we? Once that's filled up, we'll top off the tanks. Uh, jet wash, that's the thing. I need to get a jet wash still. Haven't done that. Uh, Tony Hand is sitting there. Well, I was going to move the honey pallet. Didn't get around to that either. I'll get to that, don't worry. Through the hedge. It's not a massive field here, but it's grass, so that's well. Um, oh, there's a gate that corner, isn't there? Yeah, I'm just about to see it looming, unfortunately, because the sun's coming from that side now, because the way it's gone. There's our silo. 11 grand. We're going to use it as a hay loft. I mean, we can put anything in it. I know we've got a silo just here, and we've got one over there as well for regular crops and stuff. But to use that like a hay loft, it's what we could do at some point, depending with the bale situation. We could always shred straw bales and put that loose in if we wanted to. Um, that actually fits in that gap quite nicely. It's not too bad. It may look a little bit unsightly, but I, I quite like it. 
works very well. It's a nice capacity. Now I have no idea how much this is going to take. I don't. I'm not under any illusions. We're not going to fill this. It would be nice if we could. We've got 550,000 litres of straw. We need an equivalent amount. There we go. We need the equivalent amount of silage for the top mix ration mix I do. But we need double the amount of hay. We're not going to get a double amount of hay this time. But we can always make more. Again, that's not a problem. I think I've got this on swath dropping. Let's unfold that. Yeah, because I was doing the pig slice. There. Let's forget She's a beast. Not a huge amount off here, but it's grass. As we haven't got cows near yet, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it doesn't. It depends if you want to go ultra realistic. It's always been that thing we people have always said, you know. The cows, unless they're out in the pastures, when the whole point of them being out in a the pasture, they will have supplements. Often they'll have supplements put out. Um, but generally speaking, when they're out in the pastures during the summer months, spring, summer, in, and into autumn, it's all about eating the fresh grasses out there. The salt mixed ration stuff, they will be fed, but normally when they come in. So the fact that they are going to be getting salt mixed ration, it's not the end of the world. So like I say, it depends if you want to go ultra realistic. At the moment, I need to cross. probably get the loading wagon with silage additive. I don't know how quickly it gets through it. No idea. the mowing portion. Now Teddy. Just tied up the bits I missed. I'll go down the middle of here. Okay, see you in a bit. Right then. Uh, it's now just gone out. Eight, not eight, five o'clock in the evening, early evening, and the actually that's a good point. The contract has completed on field thirteen. Oh, we've got a sewing contract for forty-seven grand. Do I take that on? I think I will. Well, that's completed. We'll collect on that. That one we'll borrow equipment, so we'll get just over forty grand on that. Yep, borrow items. We'll fill up what we need to. Uh, so, tedding will now ensue on the fields that I'm going to be using for hay and then windrowing. I'm going to get the tedding and the windrowing done tonight. And then what we'll do is we'll get a bit of grass growth, but that's not a problem. We can still collect. We'll grab a loading wagon. We'll grab some additive and um, we'll get everything collected. 
put into the um, hayloft from Foley Farm silos and um, the grass will then go into with the bit of additive into the silage clamp to be fermented for our silage once that's all good to go then we can sort our cows out we can get those underway and it gets right into the edge still absolutely adore adore the haymaking animation in 22 is that not just glorious so anyway I've got the Pertinger uh, HIT 1618, something along those lines. Sound it somewhere? Yeah, just with the gap at the bottom there, 1618. My missing grass, I am. Because I took my eye off the ball. Yeah, brilliant. So we've got the haymaking. I'm probably going to use the the Kroner Swadro. Which one is it? Uh, let's go to here. Go to our wind rowers. I'll use the, the big boy because it will make life a bit easier. The Swadro 2000. Um, although I was thinking of bailing. So I thought the uh, Samash Twist 600 there can go on the front and we could wind row and bail at the same time if we we're going to bail. But I think I'm going to do it loose. But I will use that at some point because I do like that. So I'll probably grab this Swadro. That's quite big though, isn't it? It's 19 metres. I'm just thinking of the gaps I've got between trees and things like that. But we'll do our best to get it all collected. Um, yeah, very happy with how things are progressing. Um, I'm also thinking now, do I take the opportunity to get that sowing underway now? I think I've got a couple of bags of seeds still left at the store from when I did the sewing contract on field 13 which I've now just done the fertilising on that as well I'm going to need to buy more fertiliser liquid fertiliser from our or get it delivered to our tank on the farm we're right for diesel at the moment I haven't got to worry about that just missed a bit. I want to make sure I get all of it as best I can and um yeah, so our seed and fertiliser costs. I've got a bit of seed left in the tank at the pump, which I can also get refilled as well. But like I said, what I was doing is when you lease or borrow, say not lease, if you borrow a, a seeder or a planter from a farmer to do a contract, you get what you get. And, I, and there's no point putting fertiliser in it because it's only asking for sowing. So the buy anything silo doesn't always work particularly well. Hopefully the one I've got will be all right with that. But and as, as we progress as well, as time marches steadily on, uh, we'll get more and more... Let's get all those lights on that. We'll get more and more options. I was really, really hoping that the CNS modding and Marie guys would um, <laughs> step up to the plate. That was my absolute go-to for fertiliser and seed. The price of that, the discounted price on that was so good. The doing sowing contracts and fertising contracts to stop being a not a problem, but you could just make massive profit. Um, not that I'm not making profit now. I absolutely am making good profit. So as you can see, we are tedding. Get the tedding done. Um, I will see you in a little while when all the tedding I need to do is done. And we'll get the wind rowing done. And then I would imagine we'll be losing the light by then. So then we'll, we'll honk forward. We should then have more honey there should be more strawberries up at the greenhouses and we should have some more what's the word I'm looking for wool and um, yeah I mean that will just sort of see how we go but yeah I'll, I'll get this done Teddy and win Rome first Ooh, I have paid a security deposit <laughs> for any damage I was watching who was I watching the other day I was watching Mike Mitchell I'm still a year behind. I, I never seem to be able to catch up without binge watching. I think I'm, I'm about a year behind still with Mike Mitchell. And um, they had borrowed. I might have mentioned this. I'm trying to think. They leased. Was it a Dagerman? Or I'm trying to think what the manufacturer was. Anyway. 
Uh, I think it was a cultivator, I think, they leased. And from the company they'd leased it from, but he said he was quite surprised, quite clearly, the people that had been leasing it hadn't been looking after or maintaining it, because at the end of the day, the argument would be made, well, why should I? I'm paying for it, I'm paying to borrow it, I'm paying to lease it, the company will do the maintenance. Well, obviously the company hadn't either, because when he was out using it, there were bits um, broken, sheared welds were broken, bearings were, were it, was, it was a real mess. And I suppose it's that kind of thing as well. I've leased this and I've just clouted two trees with it, so. I should really return it in the state I was given it. But anyway, yeah, I'll see you later on. All the tedding that's going to be done has been done. Uh, the tether's gone back. The tether was a 17 metre wide. I've got the Krona Swadro 2000. This is 19 metres wide. So I'm hoping with what I did with the mowers, I've got enough of a gap here between the 17 metres of hay that I've tedded and my grass. Actually, what I could do, maybe. I think what maybe I will do is move the grass over first so it's really out of the way uh, and then I'm going to go around and I'm going to windrow up all of the hay so the hay's all been made it just needs to be windrowed um, I might windrow a bit of the grass up just to get myself some tidier windrows but I'm, I am losing the light so I want to get as much of that done as I can and then in the morning we will crack on we've collected it all up putting it into a silo putting it into the silage clamp Chop that down. This was about three grand to lease. I think the tedder was a grand and a half, I think, some like that. Um, the sewing contract on field 17 is well underway. I did a couple of runs around the outside of the field first just to make sure I don't want to catch any of the hay in this. Got to be careful. The whole point is to move it away from the hay. Now, this on 19 had a tendency on the hills to slide, um, but that was only when the hills were quite steep. I shouldn't have any problem here. Oh, he says. Keep away from the hay. There we go. Perfect. Then I can windrow up the hay and I shouldn't touch any grass. I just don't want to mix the two together. Sometimes loading wagons and things like that, they get a bit bent out of shape when stuff gets mixed up. They don't like it too much. Now the problem I am going to have is where I've got these joins. Do I really want to go into the trees? Can I get just what I want? I could probably be going a little bit further back. Last little bit of grass. We've left a little bit behind, but that's not too bad. Right, so now I can concentrate on rowing up the hay. So I'll do the hay here. I'm, do, um, I'm doing here rather than the secret meadow because I've, I've already shown me doing the tedding in the secret meadow. So I thought I'd do the wind rowing here and then I'll do the wind rowing in field. Or is it? I think it is. Oh, now this, the pig fields here, was a bit of a bonus. I, I wasn't wasn't my plan intent in, initially to do any um, grass work because I didn't know you could cut the grass here. I've got to be careful of the fence. Cover as much as I can. How are we looking? Okay. Excellent. And this again is where things might get a little bit... I don't really want to if I can avoid it mix the grass and the hay together, but that's not necessarily going to be as easy to do. That's going to require some quite um, some quite tidy... Well, I always still refer to them as loading wagons, but the forage wagons 
some forage wagon work. Right, now, light is going. And I know, depending on what you're watching on, if you're watching on a phone and stuff like that, often as it gets darker, it's harder to see. I do like doing night work. It's nice to get the lights on on the vehicles and, you know, the, the, the time taken to get the lighting right on them and to be able to do night work and some of them you can just run right through, you know. But I get that it gets harder to see. There we go. Like someone just turned the light out. That was so bizarre. Just boom. Light switch. Just bounce that fence there. And I'll tidy up any bits I've made a mess with later on. So, with the light pretty much gone now, I will see you in the morning for collection. Early part of October, the uh, sewing contracts uh, on field 17 was completed last night. We're up to 326 grand. I am in the process of um, managing uh, a cotton harvest on field 5, which is just over there with the John Deere harvester. That's doing great. I've been over to the greenhouses, the garden centre, to move more strawberries. There were three pallets at each greenhouse. So we've got so many strawberries. Um, I have bought, this is the ER Shabba silage additive. Um, unfortunately, our grass will not be additive free. Um, but it'll have no E number. Well, I don't know, maybe these have E numbers. I've gone for these because these were 500 for 50 litres as opposed to 2,000 something or other for 60 litres. If we check in two not that one that one our pallets i saw, i think i showed them on a mod review but the bond silage silage additive 2990 for 60 liters hmm if we go along to the er shabba one silage additive drum 500 for 50 liters it's a no-brainer um i've loaded up we're going to take that over but I'm not going to do that first I'm going to do the hay first because the loading wagon I don't want to put silage additive in it to do the hay I'll do the hay first then we'll put the silage additive in it to do the grass but also I forgot I think we'll go for the should we just go for the big one 50,000 litres it's going to cost a bit to um I don't want a number plate on it to lease but that's the whole point of us making the money we're making. Oh, blimey, that is big. Oh, no. I've just realised what I've done. I didn't get it with the solid additive tank. <sighs> no. And you can't customise a leased piece of equipment. What a moron. That was a complete waste of money. <sighs> Never mind, I'm sure everything will be all right. What is for sale? Do we have anything like that? No. Nope. I was just talking about that as well. <sighs> right. Silage additive tank. Yes. Oh, it's because I got sidetracked to the number plate. Never mind. Um, okay, lease, there we go, <laughs> ha ha, never mind, so, hey first, but, yeah, the other thing I realised while I was over doing the greenhouses, uh, line production, I've turned that off because we ran out of stones, that made us a bit of money every hour for a while, this whole section down here is all grass, which I should be able to cut as well, so when we come to do the silage additive and we collect all the grass up, We'll get an idea of how much grass we've got going to the silage clamp. What I might do is whiz over there to the garden centre, cut all that grass down the back. That's also a not bad flat area. I'm thinking maybe the bakery can go over there, since the strawberries there already. Maybe even our, if we go for a uh, grain mill, maybe we can have a few production things going over there. 
Um, that's the thought at the moment. So, hay first. This is where we see um, just how badly my wind rowing was last night in the dark. Because <laughs> I haven't looked. I think the grass has started to grow a little bit, but it's not like it was on 19 where the grass grows um, like overnight. You've got it all grown back again. It grows like any other crop, so it's going to take a while. So, yeah, and, and to be fair, the uh, windrows are pretty big, so we'll be able to see them. So this is all going to be going into the silo that we put in yesterday. The FFS silo. Um, as a, a hay loft. And then the grass will be silage clamp. Mirrors. Roll on the update. All our crops are growing, which is wonderful. Uh, that's all grass, that's all grass. We just go right the way through, don't we? We'll go through to the secret meadow first, and then we'll come around and do the pigs. I, I have no idea how, how much hay we're going to get. But we can get a gauge. If our grass looks like it's going to be about the same as the uh, straw, which will be our silage, that's fine. I can always, if I do the bit over by the garden centre, I can always do that as hay or part, part hay, part grass. We'll see. This will be the first gauge of just how much we get off of here. It could be absolutely awful. It could be incredible. Fifty thousand litres each load. Now I'm hoping the cotton harvest we're doing at the moment will pay out. Will give us some good money as well. It's a big old field, so I'm hoping we'll have a fair bit of cotton left over after the contract. It's almost a pity to waste it, I'm thinking as well now, with all that cotton, rather than sell it, should I store it in one of the buildings and see if we do, we could do a spinnery, couldn't we? And we could do fabric, because I, I was doing it with wool on Elm Creek, but that was like 1,000 litre pallets at a time. Each one of those cotton bales is 10,000 litres. I mean, that's not to say I'm going to get... You know, I don't know how many I'm going to get. I'm hoping at least a couple, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the case. Actually, this isn't going too bad, is it? I'm not too right here. It has taken me quite a while. I think I've done a fair amount. Struggling to get that last little bit up there. Come on. There we go. It's just a funny angle on the turns, isn't it? Okay. Almost a full load, and I haven't been around the field completely yet. So. I will mop up any bits I miss. Just my own sanity, if anything else. There we have it, first full load. Let's get over to the silo. Bacon's on. Ooh, what? We're going to do all right out of this. So I'll, um, yeah, we'll unload this. I'll do all the hay first, then we'll add the additive and we'll check that because I haven't done that yet, I haven't done any additive. That should give us a 5% yield increase with whatever we pick up. Not quite sure how that works, but that's what it says on all the instruction manuals. 
I did windrow up some of the windrows, so I windrowed the windrows, so we've got some pretty big windrows in some of these fields of grass. And as I don't know how quickly the additive will get used, so that'll be in the next gauge as well when we do the additive. Is we'll see as we go if I need to buy more. I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know, it's a big assumption. I'm assuming that because it's quite expensive, the base game stuff, that, that a little bit goes a long way. That's not to say that it does. There is an assumption there. I don't have a light switch on this. I have lights all the time. Right. Hmm, don't know. Maybe because it's not eight o'clock yet, they may turn off. Okay. I'll see you when the hay's done. We'll have a gauge of how much we've got. And then we'll move on to the grass. We'll bring the grass round with additive and we'll stick it into the silage clamp. And then obviously the silage clamp will need to be compacted, then covered. And we'll go from there. It seems like a fairly straightforward job when you first start doing it and then you suddenly realise that I don't the enormity of it. I think I've done way more than I thought I had. You know, I was doing the fields thinking well, I, I don't really know. I can't really gauge it at the moment difficult to tell but I think we're going to have a lot more than I thought yeah it's additive time all the hay has been done um, I think we're up over 500,000 litres in fact I'm pretty sure we are uh, let's have a quick check up here where's our hay yeah 532 so straw bales have got 550,000 litres, hay we've got 532, and now it's going to be the turn of grass. Um, so, I think I'm going to do, yeah, I've got grass over in the pig pen, then we'll do the sheep pen, then we'll do the cow pen, uh, cow pasture, no, pen, and we'll sort it all out from there. Now I don't know... How am I supposed to do this? <coughs> Do I just pick them up? Put it there. That's exactly what I do. Right. Oh. That only takes 10 litres at a time. Well, that bodes well. It's all new to me. I may have mentioned that already. A load more contracts have popped up. I've taken on another contract for fertilising on field 17, the field we um, planted recently. There's another one popped up on field, yeah, field 13 that we, what are we doing now? We've done loads on that, we cultivated it, we planted it, we fertilised it, so it'll be the second fertilising state, so that'll be a good one. And there's a few harvest contracts and all sorts to be uh, getting on with. So let's see how quickly this drops to how much we get in a load. If it's very slow, then I've bought way more way more additive than I needed, but still a lot cheaper than had I bought it um, from a more reputable source. Let's just put it that way. Mine, mine looks proper knockoff. Off the back of a lorry gov. We'll see. Um, doesn't really matter where I start. Let's go here, turn it on, drop it down. I mean, it's 5%, it's not a huge yield increase, is it? But it's, it's an increase, might as well take it. There'd be more grass. Oh, actually, it's fair. No, this is the big pens. This is the one I, I didn't know how much we're going to get off this. 
I've got a funny feeling we may end up going and cutting the grass. Actually, there is um, another part to the secret meadow, and it's one of those weird situations. Um, I was a couple of jobs were being done. I was bringing over the uh, gator. Oh, oh that's something I was to say as well. Uh, the store, main store, reimbursed us for the accidental lease of the loading wagon, forage wagon, and then um, I got clobbered for another hour's at least. So they gave me one hand, took away with the other, but that's all good. Um, yeah, so I was bringing over the gator, parked up and was having a wander through the little alleyways by the houses. And there's another part to the meadow. Um, I turned off the PlayStation to do a couple of jobs because I had some stuff I had to do. And Baron Papa had messaged me with a picture saying um, Secret Meadow 2.0 and it was the exact same place I just kind of found by accident but by looking around what are the odds within 10 minutes of me finding it myself he messaged me to say look here it is we're here to meet hey whatever I get off here is a bonus I've already had hay off that side We'll take the grass off this and then we'll do the sheep pen in our pasture. Um, if it looks like we've barely made a dent in this silo, in the silage clamp, I may well then cut some more. We'll see where we are. I mean, I'm aiming at the end of the episode. Is, is that, that's my kind of goal, is to get a load of grass put into that silage clamp so then we'll have straw, hay and silage um, ready for doing time. That's, that's the goal. The cotton harvester is continuing. There's quite a lot of bales in that field. I'm going to let it complete the fields before I start moving the bales. And that may also be next episode. So yeah, all sorts to, all sorts to be looking at. Potential spinnery, the fabric, um, grain mill. What are the other things I said? Chickens. All sorts, all sorts of good stuff. Which this hasn't turned out to, but it's, I didn't think I was saying 50,000 litres off this little bit, but... Our additive's not going down too fast. Looks like we'll get a few loads out of that 10 litres. I know whenever I've seen Tom Pemberton do it, when they do their... Um, when they go to do their grass cutting for their silage harvests, and they have the guys come in, the contractors and the forage harvester, I know Tom Pemberton always says how expensive it is, and there are only little pots he gets. Um, how expensive? Did he say 50 quid a pot or something? It's a lot of money. And they just pour the pot into the tank of the uh, forage harvester. I suppose I should have taken sort of that as a as a cue, really. But now oh, we've got plenty of spare. If we don't use it all, we can always put it somewhere. We've got it for another time. Well, you can guess where this is going then, don't you? I wanted to do the sheep field because the uh, windrows on that are massive. I was just curious how quickly that's going to fill up. Lovely day for the start of October. Right, that's all that done. Let's lift that pick up. Close the gate on the way through. We're going to the sheep pasture from this gate. There's actually three gates into the sheep pasture. One this end, one that end, and one halfway along that stone wall. I'll say halfway, actually, just over there. Let's close that one. Oh, 
to as well over here. And close that one. Open that one. There we go. Well then, Jeremy looks very happy there. Chilled out. I'll see you even later. I would imagine it's going to be after lunchtime by the time we get it all done. And we'll see what we've got inside this clamp. And what we can do, because I've left the gate open there, we could probably do with shutting this one behind me actually. It's the only downside. Is, um... We'll cut through. Quicker, isn't it? Let's get the first load in anyway. I suppose what I could do is clear this field first. Oh, it doesn't matter which way around. It's all got to be done, isn't it? Well, here we are some time later. Um, we are post-update as well. Um, between the last bit and this bit, um, the, the, I have updated. Uh, I haven't done a new save game. I've updated. Some of the things won't take effect. Uh, what has taken effect is I can now sell the horse stable and the field the horse stables in if I want to. So we might do that. I don't need the horse stable. So I'll we'll probably sell that. Now, where do we stand with regard to our silage clamp 433,238 not as much as I was hoping to have but not bad so we're looking at 550,000 litres of straw 530,000 litres of hay and 433 of well chaff grass in the clamp which is going to need to be compacted and then covered I am going to cut some more I'm going to cut the stuff over by the greenhouses I'm going to keep hold of this for a while. As far as how much additive have we used, to do the 433,000 litres, we've used 13 litres of silage additive. Um, it says there, silage additive 7.17. I put 10 litres in the first time, ran out, put another 10 litres in, and we've used three of that. So 13 litres to do 433 litres. Um, obviously, you 5% increase. Every 50,000 load, you're gaining two and a half thousand litres. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, um, because it's increasing what you're putting in there. I think that's right. <laughs> if my maths is correct. 
Um, the cotton harvest is done. I may have made a mistake. Uh, we'll see in the next episode with regards to that. Will it be a cotton cock up or is it going to be um, cotton king? We will see. Um, I, I think I have definitely made a mistake. I think I've definitely, yeah, I think I've made a mistake. So, a few things for me to do. But that's where I'm going to end it. We've got our three products. I am going to cut some more grass. And in the time I've been doing this, I've got another pallet on each of the greenhouses of strawberries too. So it's another four. Yeah, we've got loads of strawberries coming out of our ears. I'm probably going to add some more beehives in. And, you know, it's all going swimmingly. I'm very happy. So we're going to close that. And I will see you on the next one. I'm going to go and get some more mowing done, get some more grass put in here. Then we'll start getting that compacted and covered and then I'll turn my attention to the cotton contracts that I've taken on uh, and then all the other stuff I've talked about whether it's going to be chickens and grain meal and all the diversity of production things I want to do um, yeah and then we've got loads of contracts on here a couple more fertilizing more harvesting ones have popped up <gasps> oh look at that sugar beet we're going to need sugar for the bakery so i'm wondering whether or not if i complete one of the other ones i take that on it's a big old harvest it's still going to take absolutely ages because it's going to be a big field but anyway yeah i'm getting sidetracked again i hope you enjoyed the episode um if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do Thanks for watching.